Being a film about the Cray twins, there's quite a bit of violence and gore in the film, as you'd probably expect. Most of the violence is fight scenes. There's quite a few fight scenes in pubs and clubs and, um, and in office spaces. Um, a lot of fist fighting um, and with weapons. So there's some quite brutal scenes where people are hammered and hit with objects. And um, in one scene, uh, probably one of the goriest scenes of the film, a man is stabbed to death and brutally and repeatedly stabbed. So you see the knife entering the skin quite a few times uh, we'll see through the shirt, through the clothing. So you see bloody clothing and the man in quite a lot of distress and onlookers also appearing quite distressed by what they're seeing. There's a scene where well, two people are shot in the film. One of them is in fairly close range, right between the eyes, and you see the bullet wound and the bleeding. You also see someone who was shot uh, but survives, uh, shot in the leg, and you see the bloody bullet wound and blood around that. In some of the scenes, the pub and the brawling scenes, uh, the people get quite bloody. Uh, one man in a prison cell is very cut up after he has been brutally beaten, so you see a very slashed and bloody face. Another man is very, very bruised. Um, after also being beaten up in a prison situation. There's other types of violence as well. There's a couple of torture scenes. One man is hung upside down and he has a, a car wires uh, hooked up to him and he is electrocuted. And another man is threatened by being sort of suspended off a high ledge and um, not released until he gives them what they want. There is a scene of domestic violence, spousal violence in the film. You don't actually see a whole lot happen, but a woman is dragged into a bedroom and the implication is that she's either brutally beaten and possibly raped in this scene. She's a little bit bloodied and bruised uh, the following day following this event. There's also a scene of suicide in the film. The suicide is caused by a drug overdose. The drugs are prescription pills, um, not sort of illegal drugs and um, you don't see the actual death, you do see the pill popping and you see the corpse the following day. There is a cemetery setting following this, a cemetery scene, and the issues of death and grief are touched on after this, after this event happens. There isn't a whole lot of sex in the film, but there's a lot of sexual references, particularly homosexual references. Uh, one of the characters is gay and he participates in quite a few orgies. So there's one orgy scene uh, in the film and it's, it's all men and in the, some of them are very scantily dressed and kind of been played with and toyed with and several men watch a pornographic homosexual film. You don't really see any genitals in the film but you know what's going on. There's a few you know, sexual references and not really a whole lot of nudity in the film. You see a couple of shirtless men and some low cut evening gowns but, but that's about it. With drugs it really is only those prescription pills, you see quite a few vials of pills, prescribed pills for different medical conditions, um, but yeah, no illegal drugs such as heroin or cocaine or anything like that. You do see quite a bit of alcohol being consumed, everything from beer and wine, champagne, spirits, cocktails, and mostly these are in club settings and pub settings. There is quite a bit of bad language in the film. The C word is used quite a few times, as well as the F word, the S word, and the A word, and lots of sort of slang name calling words, particularly those kind of words that will be familiar to you if, you, um, if you're around the Cockney London region, words like wanker and things like that. There's quite a few religious references in the film as well, and exclamations. Legend is directed by Brian Helgeland and stars Tom Hardy as both Ronald and Reginald Cray. It also stars the excellent Emily Browning. And you can read my full breakdown of the film at cinemum.net.